Hello everyone! Welcome to another unboxing. Today I will be unboxing Potovkov's Bears, the Soviet starter set. Now I will be the first to admit there were both of these types in the store. The $75 one, which is this type, which has five tanks and two hinds, and the $120 one, which has nine tanks and two hinds. Now I like you guys. I don't $120 like you guys. So this is the $75 one. Now the first thing I'd like to draw attention to is the fact that it says Soviet Breakthrough Force. And when I first looked into this, it's strange because this is not what a Soviet Breakthrough Force would look like. A Soviet Breakthrough Force would have T-64s and T-80s. T-72s were moved in behind the Breakthrough Forces. So that's a little misnomer there. You've got your two hinds. Now those would be present in a breakthrough force. They're nice close air support. Anyway, as usual, as you guys know, I will be using these for my East Germans. Because East Germany is amazing. It is best girl. Now, as you can see, you got the contents, which includes a mini rule book, the five T-72s, the two hinds, two decal sheets, and six unit cards. You also see the little $75 price tag that I forgot to take off. And uh, my local store is having a big sale, so this is why you're getting so many unboxing videos this month. Because I kind of went a little bit crazy. Because it's 40% off all the stuff. If you live in the California Bay Area, go to Game Castle. It, I, okay, let me rephrase that. If you're still watching this in December and you're in the California Bay Area, December of 2017... Go to Game Castle. They're having 40% off all Team Yankee, all Flames of War. Uh, buy me something if you don't want anything for yourself. I'll review it for you. I'll give you all the credit. I will kiss you open on the mouth. Not really. Um, unless it's, like, something nice, then I might. I'll consider it. Um, <laughs> I hope you guys like my jokes. Um, inside you get the little Team Yankee rulebook and a little assembly guide, as usual. As always, I suggest you go online and check out the guides there. They are so much better every single time in every single way. And both of these have video assembly guides. There's no reason you shouldn't go watch those if you're confused. Don't count on these, please. They're decent, but they're not great. And you get the mini rule book, which, oh my god, okay, that, that did not fare well. The front did, but the back pages are torn up. That, for shame. For shame, guys. This is a $75 box. That's, a, that's like six hours of my labor right there. Gone because of this. Anyway. Uh, you also get your helicopter sprues. Two sprues per helicopter. You get your flight stands. That's what these are with nice tall flight stands. And you get the little aircraft dice area even though you don't need that anymore. But that's pretty cool, I still like it. And you get your T-72s. Now I actually still have my uh, my T-64 sitting around and I'm kind of interested to compare sight. Never mind, I already put it away. So <laughs> kind of got ahead of myself there. But it's a pretty big tank, I mean, as I've said before, Team Yankee is to scale, but does not look to scale with Flames of War. Because the tanks of the Cold War are that much bigger. You got your mine plows, lower hull, turret. Looks very similar to a T-64, uh, to be honest. I'm sure you guys all hate me for saying that, but I calls it like I sees it. That's how I roll. I'm gonna make YouTube great again. Um... Get your fuel tanks in two pieces, so that's kind of like the Plastic Soldier Company T-55, rather than the Battlefront T-64. Um, to be honest, I do not know why the T-72 is worse than the T-64, given how the T-72, as its name would indicate, was manufactured after the T-64. Um, if any of you know the actual history of that, feel free to drop it in the comments. I'll, uh, I'll pin it to the top so that everybody knows. Uh, they're, they're all identical, just so you guys know that. And you get your little commander sprue. 
Yeah, no, these this is the same one as the BMPs. They're not... I guess they're okay, but... I, I just don't like... I just don't like how they didn't include anything new for the Cold War era for the Soviets or the Warsaw Pact when it comes to commanders. Like, they even molded German, West German commanders in fine casts, but they didn't provide any East German commanders. They didn't even make a special order East German commanders. As per usual, I'll complain that there's no female commanders. I will pay for them separately, man. And by man, I mean Battlefront. Or if any of you know of any distributors who sell tiny little female tank commanders that aren't girls in Panzer ones, I would gladly take a link to that in the comments. Ah, uh, here's your hind. Two identical hull pieces. And the lower fuselage there. You got the ability to make it with the landing gear open or closed. And you got the rotors on the sprue. It is one blade, five... Or, one blade. One rotor, five blades on the one rotor. You have to glue two of them in. You also have the little rear rotor, and you can model it with the landing gear open or closed. It's pretty awesome like that. You got various weapons that you can add to it. I suggest you do model it with weapons, because that's kind of the selling point of a hind, is close support. So in this little baggie, you get decals for your hind. Some of these I might use, to be honest. Well, except, yeah, they're in Russian, so yeah, I'm not going to do that, because I would like something in German, please. And thank you. Maybe yeah, I can find some West German decals that'll work. And again, another one of these useless transfers that I really don't need. If you want it, 100 views. Give me 100 views. I give it to you. Movement order card. The Red Thunder variant. Red Banner, Motor Rifle Division. You've all seen these before in Yuri's Wolves, that's why I'm not paying too much attention to them. If you want to see those more in depth, feel free to click over to my Yuri's Wolves video. It is... It is my first box set, that one, so... Yeah. Oh my god, Jesus Christ. Four points per tank for T-72s? I've been spoiled with East Germans. I don't believe in paying... Nowhere close to four points a tank for T-72s. Four points a Who would pay that for any tank? I mean, I'm sure all you West German and American players are so upset at me saying that, but who would pay four tank? Who four points for a tank and five points for the HQ? Man. Um, so, for the record, East German T-72s are like, Two points per tank, two and some change, I think. You got an air landing company, which I quite like. Um, standard air landing company, not like Afghanistan or anything. Uh, normal, normal everything. Just the same as the East Germans, same costs and everything. You got your hind card, which as per usual has slightly lower skill than your equivalent East German. Otherwise, it's the same, though. But you can bring more of them. Oh, and they're cheaper. That's pretty cool. I think it's because it's useful. So, in a recent FAQ, they actually finally confirmed this. But you can use a movement order. Actually, let me get my movement order card, and I'll point it out to you guys. You can move... You can use a blitz move to drop off your troops, basically. You can land real quick with the blitz move, offload your troops in that movement phase, and then take back off in the actual part of the movement phase other than offloading the troops. So it makes the greater skill of an East German hind way, way better. So I'm glad to see that the Soviets do get them slightly cheaper. And then you get another T-72 card. Again, four points a tank. I think the hind is the only thing the East Germans have that's actually more expensive than the Soviets. Which is, uh, which is kind of insane. And it said if a force contains the Heinz, they can bring an assault landing company, same as the East Germans. 
and you get a... I almost missed it because it fell out of the baggie. A tiny little group of magnets. These are the same size as the ones I already use in my tanks. So they are for your helicopter to glue it into this flight stand and to glue the rotors into it. Just so you can spin the rotors and take off the... Uh, helicopter from the flight stand. That way you can actually land them. Because landing is a big part of a Heinz life. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing of Patofkov's Bears. Do leave a comment if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, and feel free to subscribe for more mediocre videos. That is my promise to you. I will see you guys in the next video. Toodle!